Hello Overclockers and welcome to this episode of Overclockers UK Academy. This time we're talking about the future of storage solutions with games like Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption coming out with humongous storage capacity needs. It's really important to know your storage, get what you need and with gamers as important as ever is having that maximum performance. We're joined by Hitesh from WD who's going to talk us through all of the technical jargon that I don't know and you might not know so hopefully you'll learn a bit. Your storage family comes in a range of colours is how you sort of differentiate between your products. Can you talk us through sort of what the different colours mean? Yeah sure sure sure. So um, obviously the legacy of um, Western Digital WD was hard disk drives and a few years back with the acquisition of SanDisk and the technology etc um, it made a lot of sense for us to have a similar family understanding so the people out there who are very familiar with our hard disk drives could relate the different colors where they fit in the channel so for example um, the hard disk drive family uh, blue is high performance desktop um, everyday computing and then that moves on to WD Black hard drives, which is for gamers, yeah. and then red hard drives for the NAS market, purple for surveillance, and so on. But with green, um, SSD draw less power than okay. hard drives. So um, with green, we wanted that first step into the SSD world um, to be a big jump up from somebody using a hard disk drive. But a product that worked um, was for everyday computing, and was sufficient for what people required. Right, right? Okay. So green was the entry level point within the color family, even though in the hard disk drive world, um, green HD doesn't exist anymore. We get to blue, everybody knows blue hard drives, but the reality is we wanted a top performing SATA SSD um, to marry up what we call desktop everything within blue hard drives. It's important to position this correctly. So blue is a top-end SATA SSD. Right. It, it saturates the SATA bandwidth and it goes to sort of 550, 560 read, 530, 540 write. Um, and it's, it's as far as you can take that product to, to retain stability, high performance, and to do exactly what it says in the, the, on the tin. Okay. So when somebody gets the drive, it works. Everyone knows blue. HDD and now everybody knows blue SSD. Yeah. We got up the stack. Um, black HDD was the hard drive choice um, of disk drive for gamers. Right, yeah. For us, black, what does it mean now? Um, it means top end NVMe. So, the same way the black hard drive was top end SATA, mm -hmm. black NVMe is top end NVMe on okay. Gen 3 X4. The new kid on the block for storage, or at least the new sort of hyped word you hear a lot, is M.2. So an M.2 comes in either M.2 SATA mm -hmm. or an M.2 NVMe. Right, yeah. Um, the M.2 SATA, the bandwidth is still governed um, by the SATA bandwidth, yeah. which um, is kind of limits it to that sort of 550, 560 megabytes per second read, 530 and a bit more write. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's an M.2 or two and a half inch, um, the interface says no, beyond that. An M.2 NVMe um, works with the PCIe right, tool, okay. and that's what opens up the additional bandwidth. So a lot of people are more familiar with PCIe with graphics cards yeah, course, and yeah. slotting, into the, slotting it into the, the motherboard and you get this amazing GPU which, yeah. um, which flies. Right. Um, so I guess that's the first thing, it's M.2 SATA mm -hmm. or M.2 NVMe. Right, okay. A two and a half inch drive um, for us is all about SATA only. Mm -hmm. And all our families of two and a half inch client SSDs are SATA. Okay. Um, once you hit that NVMe um, um, PCIe bandwidth levels, that's when we start talking about 3000 something plus megabytes per second and yeah. it's a game changer, right? If you've got 560 here and you've got 3,500 there, um, for somebody that's looking for the differences or is using the drive where it makes a difference to them, that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, and in between, just to confuse it a little bit more, or, or hopefully <laughs> deconfuse it, hopefully. is the blue NVMe. Right. Currently our blue NVMe is um, a Gen 3 X2 product and black is a Gen 3 X4. Okay. The X refers to the amount of PCIe lanes which okay. then opens up how much traffic flows up and down. 
um, and how much bandwidth you get. Hence 1700 to 3500, okay. two lanes to four lanes, and it kind of starts making a little bit sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but everything which is NVMe is um, M.2 based. Okay. And I thought this was going to be a 20 second rundown, <laughs> but we have Red HD and Red SSD NAS, Great. top end SATA Blue HDD, top end SATA Blue SSD a middle ground with the blue NVMe SSD, everyday computing with green, um, very low power SSD, mainstream computing. Um, and we're kind of building that HDD color leverage and hoping everybody understands it really well. Yeah. And there's a product which fits for everybody. That's great. I mean, you can sort of, you can justify complexity when it's, you're trying to hit every single market. It's never going to be simple, but as long as it's there and people can understand it, I feel that's the most important thing. With uh, M.2 and SSD and NVMe and all this new technology coming out with storage, would you say there's still a, a place for hard drives? Is there a place in game of hard drives? Hard drives are really important. Mm -hmm. um, why are they important? They're important because the cost differential per gigabyte mm -hmm. um, has been shrinking, but it's still significant. Um, when you want to when you want to really archive a lot of games or have a lot of games on hand, um, the cost of a four terabyte SSD or to have two of them at eight terabyte, um, it, it it's still cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, that whole layering of um, storage to make it affordable and high performance. Yeah. Um, you know, wherever you've got your boot drive um, with your SSD, you've got a bunch of games across the one terabyte SSD or 500 gig or two terabyte and still keep costs down. I mean, a whole bunch of games um, yeah. on your hard drive. And for gaming, um, we know that it's not just about the gameplay. No. You know, if you're playing, you might be streaming something, you might be talking to somebody, of course, yeah. and that sort of parallelism of activity, um, you need bandwidth. Of course. And your SSD essentially gives you that bandwidth, the ability to um, interact and do what you want to do and not have wait time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the world's become very much on your mobile phone, it's always there, etc. It's instant, you'll want that instant gratification, yeah. And the minute you can't get that, um, even if it's a small amount of time, we're not used to it anymore. No, no. <laughs> it gets frustrating. You can see people who, in the past, you would have been waiting. God, you had loading screens that are about two minutes long. Now, if it's more than 15 seconds, people get frustrated, don't they? So it's all about minimizing that time, I suppose. It sounds to me like it's far more important to understand your storage and make that synergy that works for your usage. So like you said, um, it's more about getting a, a high quality SSD or uh, M.2 or whatever, using it for what you need that for, but keeping a hard drive for that bulk and the workhorse. Um, it's like we mentioned earlier with games like the new Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption coming out being 100 gigabytes plus, it's gonna be a very expensive uh, <laughs> solution if you want that all on SSDs or all on M.2s. I'll pick this up if that's okay. Of course, and, yeah. um, I mean, I look at this product and I've spoken to a lot of people about it and I don't know if you've seen it or felt it, but people say, oh, wow. It is a really nice sort of, you can you can see the quality in there. And it definitely appeals to gamers then because it's got this sort of aesthetic value with it, um, which you don't often associate with storage. Um, but it, it, it would look gorgeous in the system. And you know you've got performance as well. So people ask, oh, do you really need a heat sink? Um, Looks great, uh, I like it, but the heatsink has some other benefits as well. And, and we, talk a lot, we talk a lot about this, or people ask us, what are those benefits? And um, again, as a gamer, one of the frustrating things is when the product throttles. And there's benefits around that, um, um, where it keeps it within range, it cools slower, it, yeah. it manages that whole process. Um, and that's a whole discussion in itself, yeah. but um, that, that was important to us. Um, but if we were gonna have a heatsink, um, yes, we wanted it to look great, mm. but we also wanted to make sure that there's a there's a real benefit and a real reason if people have got to pay a few pennies extra um, to understand, is it right for me? Do I need it? Yeah. If I do, um, whether it's because I just like the look of it, which is yeah. fine, or because um, there's other residual benefits. People are very comfortable with two and a half inch yeah. SSDs, right? Um, they may be on the second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth hard drive, and as you say, you find a SATA cable, you take it out. Easy peasy, yeah. Um, but there's still a SATA cable, mm -hmm. and there's still a cable to navigate, and it True. still looks within the cases. What does this do? Where's that go? Yeah. What's it in front of? I've got a clear, I've got a clear case here. Oh, does it affect how it looks? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever people. Dreaded cable management. Um, 
with the M.2, as you see, it does go straight onto the motherboard, um, but a couple of, couple of screws goes in and it's out, um, whether it's hidden behind various aspects or not, um, often depends on the case and the board, yeah. um, but, but increasingly you'll start seeing more and more drives like this. Yeah. Um, not necessarily this a heat sink and something premium constantly, yeah. but things that look aesthetically pleasing more than just a PCB yeah. board. Yeah. Um, and at that point, um, the benefit of having something neat and tidy and not and not having a um, not having a SATA cable comes into its own. Mm -hmm. um, but it is in the same way that people aren't afraid of plugging a CPU in or putting a graphics card in or a stick of DRAM in. Yeah. Um, this is actually just those connectors yeah. in, um, screw it in. So it seems a lot like it's more, uh, I guess, a fear of change. It's that people are so used to that sort of SATA approach that it freaks them out doing it differently. Whereas it's not really that different because like you say, it's very similar to how you would put in a CPU or your card. So it's not really something to fear by the sounds of it. Just um, learn, learn how to do it. It's super easy and then you get a massive benefit. So. So for someone who is a current owner of an SSD, uh, a decent quality SSD, uh, we'll, we'll go for someone of our customers, so sort of a gamer, maybe does a bit of creative work on the side. Would you say to them, it, it is now a good time to upgrade to sort of an NVMe based um, approach, an M.2? Is it something you would see sort of uh, a worthwhile considerable gain on doing? In short, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to understand, Again, understand yeah. why. Um, and if you don't need it mm -hmm. today, do you want to wait a month, two months? And there's no right answer. Yeah. And the reason there's no right answer is, um, yeah, the technology's moved incredibly fast. What took 10, 20, 30 years for a hard drive to move has moved mm -hmm. in five to seven years yeah. with an SSD. Um, but the fact that people think about this, mm -hmm. um, um, in itself kind of answers a question they have. If they're thinking about it, are they saying that I want my PC to boot that couple of seconds yeah. quicker? Um, oh, right, I've got an SSD and I'm playing games and it's it's a huge improvement on what I had before, but I want the assets and the textures yeah. in between you levels. Want further, level. yeah. And for all those things, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get benefit from that. Thank you, Tesh. Pleasure. It's been really cool to sort of like hear all about this and really I feel like I know more so I really hope that's translated to the people at home. Um, so thank you for joining us for another episode of Overclockers UK Academy. Make sure to sort of leave in the comments if you've got any ideas of what you want to see next time, what you thought about this episode and if there's any more uh, questions you want answered I'm sure Hitesh can help us out on that, replying to you and finding that out. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe as always and uh, we'll see you next time.